This is a tutorial video on how to properly convert a Python application with Py installer with in-depth explanation. I hope this video will be helpful for the Python community. So let's start without wasting any time. First of all, we have to install AutoPy to EXE which is an easy interface for Py installer. We can install it using pip, I hope everyone knows this. I have already installed in on my system. Now we can open the interface by running autopy to exe in the command prompt. It will open in your default browser. This is our easy pi installer interface. Now let's explore the options one by one. Before this, let me tell you that I am going to use this python example for this tutorial. This is a custom Kinter example, it also uses some image assets. So we will be using this as the example. Here you can see that we have to add the script location. You just have to browse your main Python application script. Now let's see the two main options of Py Installer. This two options decide the structure of the executable. We have one directory option which is very commonly used. With one directory we will get the executable like this. The main application is here, and there is also a folder with some necessary Python files. Previously, with older version of Py installer we used to get the executable in the same internal folder. But after the update the executable is separated from that folder which now looks a lot cleaner. If we use the one file mode then we will get a single executable without any folder attached to it. It is useful if you are not planning to make any installer. When you open this executable then it extract the internal files in a temporary folder. This temporary folder is located in this path of your system. Let me show you how the folder is created. This is the new folder created just now. Inside it we will get the same files we used to get with one directory. With one file mode you may get a slower loading application because of the extraction process. When you close the application, this temporary folder will get deleted automatically. But sometimes there are also chances that this folder doesn't get removed when the application is crashed. So don't use this mode if your application size is too big. If you want to change the spawn location of this temporary folder, then you can do this by using this option called runtime tmpdir. You just have to write the new location or folder name here. Now when you open the application, that temporary folder will now be created in the same location where your executable is present. Here you can see the process. The files are inside this folder. Note that this will not work if the user have the executable in any unwritable location. The temporary folders gets deleted when we close the application. This will at least help the users to easily find and delete any crashed files to free up the space. After this, we have two more option, now we have to decide whether we want a console or not. With console based app you will get an interactive console like this. Sometimes we need to have the console with many applications. But if you use the window based mode then you will not get any background window. With console mode there is an option called hide console. You can find it in the advanced tab. With this option we can minimize or hide the window when the application is started. This example will show the demo. You can see that the console window pops up and gets minimized, then the main window is opened. After that we have the icon option where you can add your application icon. Just choose the .ico file. Note that PNG images are not supported. Note that this icon is visible in the exe file only. This will not be shown inside the application. Now comes the most important part of this tutorial, that is packing of files. Under additional file option we can add any folders or files required by our application. Like in the demo example we have a folder of test images. This folder is part of our application so we will add it using add folder option. 
Similarly you can do this for all the assets of your application. When you are packing any asset folder, you should know how to search that asset properly otherwise you will end up with errors. For example we have packed that image folder inside like this. So we will have to search it within this folder properly. Let me show you the correct method to search any asset inside your application. If you are searching any asset using absolute path, then it will not work in other users systems. So never use this way to find the files. Second way is to use the relative path, but with relative path you will need to have that folder in the same directory like this. There is no need to pack the folders if you are using relative path method. But as we have packed our files inside, we have to find that folder properly. This should be the way to find the packed folder. First we will get the parent directory path using this line. Then we will join that path with our packed folder name. Then again we can join it with the file name and get the proper path. Let me also tell you that we can pack module folders inside the executable. There is no need to pack modules if the module contains only Python scripts. But if the module has any other file like images or non-Python files, then we will have to add that module folder separately. For example we have custom tkinter module, this module have some JSON file inside it which is not automatically packed by Py installer. That is why we have to add this folder manually. If we have some modules which are comparatively bigger in size, then we can exclude the module. This will help in one file mode as it reduces the size and booting time of the executable. You just have to write the name of the module in exclude module option. After that you can copy the module folder in the executable location. Then you have to copy this code in the top of your application. This code tells the executable where to search for the modules. Under advanced options, you can also add a splash screen image for your application. Choose the image you want to show, then add these 5 lines of code in top of your application. It will show up like this in your executable. You can see how cool it looks. So these were the main settings and options you need to know in order to get a clean executable. There are more options available in Pi Installer. Like you can add hidden imports, you can also add runtime hooks which are simply scripts which will run before the startup. You can customize lots of thing in the executable with Pi Installer. In the end we will specify the output folder of our executable. We can also add other arguments here in case we have options in new versions of Pi Installer. You can also export the settings so that you can use it later. After all these tweak, we just have to click the convert button. The executable will be created in the output directory after this conversion process. If you want to make an installer for the executable, you can either use Inno Setup or Install Forge, both softwares are free to use. But let me tell you that your executable may be reported as a false positive by antiviruses. In order to avoid this you have to buy a legit code signing certificate, otherwise it will always show as unknown publisher. I am not going to cover this in detail so you can do your own research. Please like and share the video, subscribe for more tutorials.